Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of More Than. The difference you hear in my voice is nothing less than all the celebrations, all the singing, all the screaming after winning the FA Cup at the weekend. So I really hope all Arsenal fans and football fans enjoyed it as much as we did. Our guest today is the one and only Matthew Flamini. I played with him many years and he was a big, big figure in the dressing room. He's someone who I have massive respect for. His story is incredibly interesting and much like myself, he's trying to do his best to save the environment. Matthew has his own biochemical company, which he started at the age of 24 and he expanded while he was playing football. I thought it would be great to chat to him and learn a bit about what he's doing right now. So I hope you guys enjoy. So hello everyone. Uh, I'm here with the one and only Matthew Flamini. How are you, Matthew? Hi, hi, bro. I mean, all good. Uh, pleasure being here. I mean, great seeing you, great speaking to you. I'm very pleased. I mean, thank you for inviting me first and uh, very pleased of, of being part of it. And, um, and again, I'm a big admirer of what you're doing. And uh, I always like um, guys like you, you know, thinking out of the box and trying to, 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 to promote positive, uh, positive impact. So thank I'm you. Bro. And thank you for inviting me. I appreciate that, man. So tell, tell me where, where are you at right now? Where are you calling me from? So I've been doing my lockdown in London. So I've been there for quite a few months. And uh, recently I've moved back to France where my family is there. So I haven't seen them since, uh, since December. So that's why as soon as we could uh, travel, I, I flew to France and uh, spending some time there with them. Mm. and uh, trying to be as careful as possible because it seems like then um, some people have forgotten and uh, it's still uh, the virus is still around so trying to have a, a very safe uh, lifestyle until now during quarantine um tell me how has it been for you has it been easy has it been hard um yeah tell me how how was this those few months for you so obviously uh, it was a difficult time, I think, for everyone. Obviously, a lot of people have lost some some family and and, and close friend. But personally, I've been um, I've been trying to look at uh, I mean the positive out of this situation, even if there was not much. But that's how I think, and uh, always trying to to look at the positive out of any situation, even if it's a difficult one. So on my side, what I've been trying to do is like to um, for important. And uh, that was like uh, definitely uh, spending uh, more time with friends and family. And uh, I mean, when I say spending more time with them, it's like uh, via, uh, you know, like a computer like we're doing right now. So yeah, yeah. it happened and I, I've been talking much more to my family via video video conference call. Wow. Uh, I'm also trying to, to cut a lot on the, all the superficial stuff that uh, I used to do in my life, like going to restaurants nearly every night or kind of like uh, seeing a lot of people which were like not really worth uh, seeing or spending yeah. energy yeah. on so um, i've been doing that uh, uh, tra- trying to, f- to focus on myself and uh, and also focusing on the, um, on eating healthy and uh, and um, and uh, and working maybe harder on some project which was close to my heart yeah that's so good man i feel like this quarantine has given people the opportunity to appreciate more the little things that day to day we don't realize you know because we're so busy with our lives and our businesses and all this stuff that you kind of forget that Usually the things that make you happier, they're just in your, like next to you, right? And you can barely see it. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think that's uh, very important to say that, like you say, like just a small walk in the park or like uh, uh, being able to see people that you really care. I mean, like when you lose, uh, when you lose uh, the, the freedom, because at the end of the day, I think lots of the freedom. I mean, like you realize how important it is. But um, also on a positive note, I think you and me are very much engaged in, in, in everything related to sustainability yeah. or not on that aspect. The fact that um, pollution have been reducing a lot. I mean, cow are not allowed. I mean, like on that aspect, there was a lot of positive yeah. around and And hopefully people have learned to, to live potentially without cars or people are, will be able to also adapt to what the new the new, um, the new everyday, which you know is like, which is sometimes also working from home instead of going to the office. So all that's now is part of our everyday. So hopefully there is like um, it's the beginning of something new. You see? Yeah, I really, I really hope that people have have taken um, new hobbies or or new ways of living into into what you say the new normality. I picked up a second hand bike, and you know the, through quarantine I used to go on like bike rides. I live uh, in the countryside outside of London, so. This is one of the things that I picked up through quarantine that I hadn't done in a really long time and that I'm taking now into my new normality. So have there been any hobbies or skills that you have 
started in quarantine and now you want to take in your life or? Yes, yes, quite a few, to be honest. I've been like uh, cooking a lot. So um, I used to, nice. I just, used to eat a lot outside and uh, and order a lot so um, yeah. i've been cooking uh, cooking myself quite a lot so that's one of the things which i really enjoy doing you mm -hmm. know like just taking your, your your mind away and like a good way to to reboot or or recharge energy yeah. i've also like i've always been training a lot obviously as being a professional athlete for a long time and uh, i mean but what i've been also what i've been doing you know recently is like exercising in the park you know mm -hmm. using my body weight because Obviously, going to the gym like uh, was like not very, uh, not very safe. So uh, I've been going to the park quite a lot, exercising in the park and using my body weight, you know, in order to to, to keep fit. Yeah. So that's something which I've been doing like uh, every day, to be honest. So yes, little uh, little things which um, which have improved, I would say my my every day, and um, and also trying to to go to bed earlier because obviously yeah. when you have the the distraction to go out and go to restaurants, you yeah, see, yeah, yeah. You can go to bed earlier. And um, yeah, part of my everyday, I'm trying to, to also wake up earlier in order to, to start, you know, other activities, you know, a bit earlier than, than the usual, I would say. So overall, uh, a healthier lifestyle, we would say, right? <laughs> yes, I mean, trying, you know, trying. I think that's so important. I mean, like people focus, you know, too much on, on, on the cure and not enough on the prevention. And I think the prevention is like even more important than the cure because, you know, it's like for us, which have to perform on everyday basics, you know, it's like we're trying to avoid any type of injuries. That's why the prevention is part of our everyday. And that's something we should definitely get around and to bring that to, to the people out there. That's so good to hear, man. Um, so I think a lot of people in this podcast, uh, loads of football fans, uh, mostly will know who you are. But for the people um, that they're coming here to listen from different walks of life, can you tell us who you are? Who's Matthew Flamini and how did he get to the position where he is today? So, yes. So, Matthew Flamini, I'm half French, uh, half Italian. I grew up between France and, and Corsica. Corsica is a small island. Uh, which is uh, which is French French island. Um, I studied law for a certain period of year, uh, and then I turned a professional football player uh, at the age of 19 when I moved from France from the club of Marseille to the club of Arsenal. I played the four years for Arsenal, then I moved to to AC Milan. After where I played another five years, I came back to Arsenal, played another three years, and um, I've been playing recently until uh, until like a couple of months. I was playing in Spain for the club of Retafe. So that's uh, uh, on the sport side. On the other side, I would say on the business side, um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm like you, you know, I'm a, I like to qualify myself as an environmentalist, which means like from a very early age, I've been aware of a lot of aspects which, which are impacting the, the environment. Mm -hmm. And from a very early age, I said, okay, if I do something, I will want to do something around, around that topic. And uh, that's why at the age of 24, I co-founded a, a biochemical company and since then, I've been involved like very much around like all different topics related to environment. And I've been trying to also use my platform to create awareness. So, yes, I'll say I'm an athlete, but also an environmentalist and trying to, 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 to drive awareness around me. That's so good. And I feel like you were one of the pioneers uh, of like not only um, being able to, to manage football and business at the same time, because I remember... I remember you leaving the dressing room a lot of days with your suit and tie going for an important meeting. And I used to, I used to look at you and I was like, look at this guy, you know, he's not only like playing football, he's actually, you know, doing his business and obviously created like a really, a really successful company. But before we talk about the, the company, I want you to tell me um, why has the environment been something important to you? Is that something linked to you growing up or is that something that came up after in your life? How, how, how was it for you? I mean, that's come from, uh, I think, two things. I mean, the first is uh, my education and the second way I grew up. I mean, the first one is, I would say, my dad used to, to watch a lot of documentary on TV. So I kind of grew up in this environment where um, I also used to watch a lot of documentary related to nature and uh, related to environment at first. The second aspect is, I think, like you are grew up by the sea. And obviously, when you by the sea um, automatically I mean the sea has a massive impact on, on your everyday life and has a massive impact in your, in your education and in, in the way you are because for me I mean 
when I live abroad, I miss the sea. The sea is a kind of like brings me energy, brings me serenity. And uh, obviously going to the sea quite often, uh, you see the impact that, that people can have on the sea. You see the plastic going around, you see the plastic like on the beach and all that from a very early age. I always myself, I mean, what can we do, you know, to kind of like uh, bring some kind of solution or maybe like try to, to drive change and help people realize that, uh, I mean, we are together, I mean, like having a, a negative impact on this planet and obviously there, there are going to be consequences. So that's why um, at the early age, I wanted to do something around that and try to, to bring my small contribution. And, uh, and I believe, you know, it's like if we all uh, try to change something in our life, I mean, putting all this effort together, we definitely, be, uh, I strongly believe that we'll be able to, to drive change together. Yeah, I, I really, really relate to the part that you said uh, about the sea. I, as you know, I, I was born in Barcelona. I've lived in the sea my whole life. And um, it, it's so true. I mean, for any person that's listening to this, that they live close to the sea, I feel like it's something that is so needed, right? Like for me, even, I remember like sometimes when we go to play in Bournemouth or we go to play in Brighton and you're in the hotel and you see the sea, it's like a complete different state of mind. Like, as you say, um, I feel like I, I, I need to, to see it, to like feel like myself, to feel freedom, to feel serenity. And when, you, when I'm on holiday, you know, there's always so many places in the world that I want to visit. But I was like, I can't. I need to go to the beach, wherever it is. I just need to feel, you know, the ocean, its you openness. Feel, it's a way to feel home. Yeah, 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 for real. For real. And um, yeah, I feel like... I don't know how it was for you because, um, I mean, we're from different generations, but there was times in, like in the summer that I couldn't go in the water because of all the plastic. Barcelona um, also has one of the dirtiest uh, beaches in, in Europe, in La Barceloneta, which is the one in the, in the, um, in the metropolitan area of Barcelona. So um, it was really difficult for me to see, you know, like I'm just a kid, I want to get in the water and I can't because there's all of this trash in the, in the, um, in the sea and, one of the things that drove me, as you say, to try and have a little bit more of, of impact or put in the work was thinking of like younger generations, you know, what if I can have kids or what if like the kids of my friends or, or in my family, newer generations won't be able to go on the sea because we're destroying it, you know? So that was like a very big inspiration for me to, to go forward. So it's like really cool to see that kind of come from like the same place. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we have created the problem. And like you say, you know, it's like, is that the legacy we're going to leave to the, to the next generation? So um, it's very inspiring also to see all these young kids uh, uh, going in the street and like standing up for the future and, uh, and requesting, you know, like changes. I think that's uh, the next generation, which is like uh, going strong and, and we cannot ignore them. So I think the power we have, I would say, or at least like the advantage we have here at LET is we have a platform. And having a platform, I mean, you have, I mean, two options is or to use it for having a positive impact and creating change and inspiring people and, uh, and driving change. Or you can use it for, I would say, like uh, basic stuff. But I think athletes have realized and they have a social responsibility toward the people out there and they have a platform which they can, they can use to drive change and, and inspire others. And, uh, and again, you know, I'm going to be very honest. Uh, the only reason I accepted to, to join, uh, to join that program and, and to, be, to be here with you is because I strongly believe that what you do is very inspiring. I strongly believe that you use a platform to drive change and inspire people. And, uh, and that's amazing. And I really hope like more and more athletes, you know, will, will follow that path because I don't think today is enough to, to simply be a, an athlete or simply be like a football player when you have millions of kids like looking at you you have to show the right example and showing the right example is not only about playing well on the pitch and performing on the pitch but it's also like i mean showing the right example outside the pitch and that's exactly what you do so um that's why i'm, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here today thank you man and touching on this subject um uh, why do you think that um footballers or like other athletes feel um you know, don't feel this social responsibility or they don't use this platform, uh, the platform that they have for the best. Do you think is, um, you know, um, they're scared of like being told that they cannot talk about other subjects because they're just footballers or you think is all because they want to feel comforted and stepping out the box sometimes can be a bit uncomfortable. Why do you think that is due to? I think for, there are a few reasons. I think for too long, I mean, for too long, we had this, 
these people out there saying, oh, you know what, he's a football player, should focus on playing football. I mean, I think that's outdated. I mean, yeah. like reality is uh, uh, these days, as I was saying, I mean, athletes are becoming role models. I mean, with social media exploding, I mean, we can see athletes having like a massive following. I mean, today's sport is probably the most followed industry out there. And let's not forget that we also live in a, in a, in a, in a time where people are losing trust in, in the institutions, people are losing faith, and sport is one of the industries will help, help you know, the, the young kids to, to dream. And dreaming is like so important. So having athletes becoming role model for all this generation, I mean, now more than ever, okay, they have to stand up. And standing up for like important causes is, is very important, okay, from my point of view. So I don't think like people saying like, oh, they are athletes, they are football players, they should play, focus on, on, on playing football is the right things to say. At the end of the day, I mean, if you're a football player, if you're a tennis man, and if you have a cause which is close to your heart, and you are knowledgeable about this course, you should be able to speak about it. I mean, and especially if you have an audience, especially if you have a platform, and if you want to have like a positive impact and educate people, part of which are part of your platform, to have like, uh, uh, to drive change, what's wrong with that? So I think a lot of things have changed since the past few years. And people also out there want, you know, these athletes to stand up for what's important for them. And if for you and if for you sustainability or environment is close to your heart, I mean, like there is nothing wrong and it's totally like logical that you want to stand up and you want to communicate around that. So I'm definitely like believe that athletes should definitely stand up for what's important for them. You have to be knowledgeable about what you talk about. You know, that's very important. But once you know you're knowledgeable and once you know it's something which is close to your heart, you are allowed to speak with passion. You're allowed, you know, to communicate around it. And I think, you know, that's what I call doing a lot of good around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, mate, I I completely agree with what you're saying. Um, in the like with all the stuff that's happening in the world right now, I feel like um, loads of more athletes are standing for what they believe. I think, uh, especially um, with racism, with all the stuff that's happening in the US and around the world, all the protests. I think is given the chance for many footballers um, in our industry to speak up and. Um, you know, for example, Raheem has been a clear example that, um, you know, racism has also given them a voice and he's used it in a, in a great way and he's inspired a lot of young people. Um, and I think obviously it's great, you know, I think everyone, as you say, has different causes uh, that they're close to their heart and they're, they're, the, they're the ones that they have knowledge and they're the ones that have passion and they're the ones that talk about. But I feel like, um, obviously, every single problem is important, you know? Uh, there's so many things happen in this world and it's very difficult to care about everything. Mm-hmm. I always say that you need to fight your battles, you know? But I've also feel that um, with all these things happening, um, the environment has kind of fallen behind a bit because there's this, these social causes have, have made so much noise and, and um, rightly so, you know, because they're, they're truly important uh, for humanitarian reasons. But um, why do you think um, all... Uh, environmental causes um, people feel that they're not as important because I feel um, the climate crisis that we're having nowadays uh, is being shadowed by all the other stuff happening in the world but truly is uh, the situation is very critical because it can affect our food chain it can affect biodiversity and it can get to a point that it's not like it's irreversible you know mm-hmm. so why do you believe that um, that you know, it's gone into a second position, and and people are, have stopped to care about the environment a little bit to focus in other things. I think it's a matter of fact. Uh, it's a matter of fact. I think that in life, some some I will say some 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 principles which are extremely important. I would say freedom is one of them. I mean, like obviously, it's unbelievable that even in 2020 we're still facing racism, and uh, looking at what happened, of course, you know, in the US that has been like obviously um, had a repercussion in the US, but also in Europe. And that's a topic we have been talking a lot recently. So um, I would say, I just hope it's not a topic that we have been talking recently. And then, you know, like it happened in the past, we really know it will, it will be forgotten because I mean, fighting racism is something which we have to do like every single day. And, uh, and, uh, and racism has to really like uh, terminate. But as you mentioned, I think climate change sometimes what people don't realize is uh, is affecting all of us 
And I think also climate change, the way it has to be presented, it has to be breaking down. What does that mean? I mean, climate change, if you break it down, you have, you have pollution. Okay, pollution is very important. We all live in the big cities. So uh, living all in the big cities, I mean, even if you don't understand what's climate change, but if I'm telling you, listen, you live in a big city and pollution is affecting you every single day. Because if you go in some part of Asia, you cannot even exercise outdoor. Okay, so pollution, for example, is affecting all of us. Uh, then I would take plastic. I mean, people are maybe not aware that plastic, okay, even if you don't care about the sea, because maybe you grew up in a city where you don't see the sea or you don't have a connection to the sea. But I think we're all eating fish, right? So because we're all eating fish, I mean, it has been proven that now in every single fish you eat, you find microplastic, okay? Which means that in all of us, we have microplastic, except if you're vegan. Like I think you are, <laughs> but we're probably eating fish in the past, so we probably yeah. have, have microplastic. So, climate change, I would say, environment, all the environment issues are affecting all of us. Okay, what's important to say also is that the poorest populations are the ones which are the most impacted by the environmental issue. What does that mean? Before we used to have the uh, uh, war migrant. Okay, which means like after war, the migrants were leaving the country, which were like uh, uh, in, in war. Now you have the climate mig migrant, I think are like four or five times more important than the war migrant. So all that is having repercussion on, on a lot of people and sadly also on the poorest population. Okay, the way we eat, I mean, the way we eat, I mean, it's becoming a, like a disaster. And I'm sorry to say that, but all this processed food, I mean, uh, producing like, uh, uh, um, you know, like all the animal protein, uh, how it's processed, you know, basically like we are destroying ourselves, but we're also destroying the planet, okay? And uh, yes, maybe like recently because of everything which has happened like around racism, I mean, we have put maybe the environmental problems on, on a second, uh, as, as a second, uh, I would say, um, on a second plan, but there are one is as much important as the others. And I think what's important is, is all about like the authenticity. Obviously, if, uh, if, if I've been, uh, let's say, if I've been um, attacked by, by some racism, um, you know, from, by, by some racism, I would say, um, uh, words or things like that, obviously you want to stand up for that, which is natural. I think what's important is to say that different athletes, different people have different passion, as different also want to stand up for different, different causes. And I kind of been standing up like you, you know, now for many years for sustainability. But at the same time, so when I see what has been happening recently for racism, I also wanted to be, you know, like uh, to be backing up my, my brothers and to be backing up my friends, you know, which are also standing up for, for, for such an important topic, which is racism. So what I can say is like, I really hope that you, me, we have been like extremely like, uh, we have been like standing up for racism and standing up with our brothers, you know, against this massive issue. And I hope, you know, maybe like very soon on a second stage, maybe like our brothers, you know, with whom we have been standing up, you know, against racism, maybe they will be standing up also for with us, you know, against like environmental issue. And I think people are so much more powerful when they, you know, join forces and then, and then they, 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 they act as a, as a team. And you know what, we've been playing as a, in a team like for so many years and like team spirit and working as, as one unit. I mean, that's how it makes you uh, successful. So yes, of course, we talked a little bit more about different topics recently, but I think, uh, I mean, environment is so important and that, I mean, basically impacting all of us, all our life on an everyday basics. And, uh, and we all live in cities with pollution, the way we eat is impacting us. Um, so it's, it's uh, for me, uh, hopefully, like, we'll start talking about it, like, uh, very soon again. Yeah, and I think it's um, also important to say that um, I feel like both, they're in many ways uh, interlinked because uh, I don't know if you heard about the term, about the term of, like, environmental inequality that is, like, in many uh, poor areas or neighborhoods in the big cities, um, actually, where most people of color live, they're the areas that are most affected uh, by the environment also because they also have like less green spaces um, mm -hmm. you know the food that they eat um, usually is cheaper so when it's cheaper mm -hmm. usually this food is more processed so that is uh, giving people uh, more like uh, health conditions and they have poor health care so I think like it's 
the there's a the problem is kind of bigger than just we have one here, we have one there. I think like mm -hmm. it unifies together, and I think it's important to obviously, um, you know, as you say, hold hands together, ones with each other, um, you know, help each other. Everyone has a different passion and a different course, but um, obviously we make more noise and we make more progress every time we work as a team. So I think that is a great message. Um, so uh, putting this um, political uh, talk aside a little bit, I want to ask you how did you start um, GF Biochemicals and um, I guess um, the reason behind it was to eliminate uh, oil production in a way. So please uh, tell us like, how did it all start it and what is the goal of, your, uh, of this company? So just uh, briefly, so everyone, uh, so we're trying to, to clarify quite a few things. I mean, what we do is like, so started at the age of 24, I was at the time playing in Italy mm -hmm. and uh, started developing a, a set of technology where basically we, we convert what we call agriculture waste. Okay, so the leftover from the sugar cane or the leftover from the corn cobs. So we're talking about second generation feedstock, which is not uh, uh, in conflict with, with food. And we are turning that in what we call a bio-based solvent. And uh, the solvent are today being used in uh, um, different types, such as home care, personal care, industrial cleaning. And uh, because all the products are what we call bio-based and uh, all biodegradable, and there are no water toxicity, and also because in a, in, in a market of home care and personal care, you have a lot of pressure these days coming from the regulators. Mm -hmm and also pressures coming from the consumers. What does that mean? It means like everyone these days wants a safer product and more sustainable product. And because more and more product coming from the petrol-based industry are being phased out, they have to be replaced. And that's what we are doing basically with our solvent, which are sustainable. We are replacing the harmful chemical from the petrol-based industry by, by more sustainable ones. And we are, I mean, selling to industries such as like uh, shampoo, skin care, or like detergent for the house, uh, laundry product. Um, we are selling to, to this type of application. And that's something I started like uh, quite a long time ago, but it's also a way for me to, to kind of small, con to give a kind of a small contribution because obviously like all these products which we are using are ending like in, in, in a water or also like people don't realize that, I mean, your skin is your biggest organ. You know, when you wash yourself, and when you wash yourself with harmful chemical, all that penetrates your skin, you see? So all these things is part of like uh, education and it's part of also like the more you talk about it, the more aware you become and the more careful you become also like in a, in, a, in a product you are using. You know, when you go to the supermarket, I mean, like depending on what you use, you can have a product which is much more harmful than another. And that's part of like what you are basically like what is in it. The same way than what you're eating. I mean, if you eat processed food, you have a lot of preservatives, you have a lot of chemical in it. I mean, you don't do good for yourself. So that's why before I was talking about the, the prevention in life in order to stay away from the industry, in order to keep healthy. All that is part of you every day, you see, and like living again in a healthy environment. I mean, we're talking about protecting the planet, okay? Amazing. Some people maybe don't really care about the planet, which is totally fine. But I want to say that at least everyone care about themselves you know i mean i'm sure you care about yourself i care about myself and i think everyone watching us here is they care about themselves so unfortunately you cannot have a healthy lifestyle if you don't live in a healthy environment because as i was saying before if you we all live in cities i mean cities are, are full of, of pollution and unfortunately i, I mean like the statistics saying that every year you have up to four million people dying of pollution so we all on the same board here and in order to be healthy, we need to live in a healthy environment. So everything is related, I would say. And um, when you started um, this company, um, I don't think there was the awareness that there is today about the environment, about sustainability. I feel like sustainability is like a very modern term, you know, that back when you started, when you were 24, it wasn't around. So do you feel um, when you started the company, you had the same vision that you have today? you feel it has evolved? Do you feel that lately, um, you know, with like the, 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 the conscious that has expanded about um, sustainability uh, and all these things has uh, given you your, um, 
your your company a new opportunity or, or or since the beginning when you started you were like okay i want to do this and this is what's going to happen no i think obviously like i would say sustainability and environmental aspect have been growing a lot over the past few years i mean the type of discussion we used to have five years ago or ten years ago even three years ago are totally different i mean obviously now i mean the, the consumer are like very much aware about like what's happening people are really putting pressure on the big company because they want more sustainable products, they want safer products. They have realized that, I mean, some of the products they have been using for many, many years, I mean, was not good for them and was not good for the environment. So obviously with all this pressure, that unlock uh, even more potential for all the companies which have already done the swift, going from harmful chemical to like a, a sustainable and safer chemical. So obviously that's, that's very positive. And um, it, it makes, you know, the penetration, I would say, to the market easier. And other things I would say is also starting at an early age, you know, like uh, around the, all the, the, the different uh, issues related to sustainability. I think I would say that more and more and year after year, I've been able to educate myself around the, around the topic. And um, I'm someone who's like, I'm watching a lot of the documentary around that topic. So I like to read about it. And... Uh, and there are a lot of logic behind. So that's why I've also been involved in quite other um, activities, which I'm, I'm, I'm very proud. You know, for example, we, we founded the, the first master in bioeconomy in Europe, and we did that in Italian collaboration with four uh, universities. So that's something which I was also... I believe education is very important. I mean, education gives you uh, some foundations, and once you have foundations, you are able to build on it. You know, it's like having some solid foundation of a house, then after you can do anything you want on the top. So uh, that's why I believe that's come from educating the next generation. That's come from giving access to information in order for people to take the right, to make the right choice. And um, that's why, you know, I was very, very, very excited when, when we learned that. Well, that was, that was actually one uh, was going to be my next question. Like I've seen that uh, you released a bio journal as well earlier in the day and then uh, a bioeconomy program, uh, which I think is, it is something that is going to be needed in the in the, in the short term future. And um, you talk about about education. How um, I, I truly agree with you. First of all, I think uh, self education is kind of for me. I mean, education is is power. Knowledge is power, right? And and for me, for example, are you people that we want to express uh, our passions and we want to educate people? The first thing that you need for that is be educated right because you don't want to talk for the sake of talking um how um has it been challenging for you to manage that having a career because obviously not only to educate yourself but also to um you know progress your company release this um bioeconomy program like there's so many things that you've done while you were playing football um how how hard was it for you or how um how did you manage to be able to excel at being a football player because you've had a really successful career. You've played for some of the best teams in Europe, in Italy, in Spain, in France, everywhere. How, how, like how difficult or, or, or what, how did you manage that? I think what's important to say is that I've been first extremely lucky because I've been able to, to, to live off my passion for, for many, many years. And that was football so from a very early age. I mean, like uh, football has been everything to me. And um, growing up, I mean, like, and becoming a professional football player, what's important to say is, like, when you're an athlete, I mean, like, you work hard and you're training every single day. But the recovery is also part of you every day. I think I would say the recovery is as important as a, as a hard work. And who says recovery says, like, you have enough time to be able to do something else on the side. And when I said doing something else on the side, it means, like, keeping your mind busy, okay? The reality is, like, athletes have other passions and uh, why not being able to fulfill one of these other passions let's not also forget that a football career is made of up and down i mean i had injuries in my life where i couldn't play football for six months if football is the only thing you think about if that's the only thing you have then i mean if you cannot uh, play for six months then you're having a nightmare for six months so you need to have enough things in your life in order to change your mind, in order to kind of like find some positive out of a situation. So for me, sustainability, environment, and being able to do other things have been extremely helpful when I was having, when I was having some, some difficult times. So, so like being injured or like maybe not playing, you see, it was for me an escape. And considering that 
we also have enough time to do other things. I mean, I don't think it's a, it's, it's, it's a mistake of like being able to do like, how we say, like playing football at the top level, giving everything to football. And at the same time, you know, having another interest, another passion and being able to fulfill it also. Obviously, your purity has to be football because, I mean, like, uh, that's something you have to, to, to give 100% of your, of, your, of your effort. But once you have to recover, once you have to change your mind and do something else, why not doing it for something which is important to you? And that's what I did, you know, being able to have, like, to be organized, being able to be surrounded by the right people around me. Because obviously I was not like, uh, I was not involved maybe in like everything or in every day, but like I was part of it. And it was for me like a great opportunity to live one passion on the field, which is football, and one passion of the field, which is like related to sustainability. So, so again, I mean, like, uh, I think it was for me like a great escape and a great support when things were not always going well. Yeah, I think that's amazing that also, as you say, uh, whether you were lucky or whether... Or whether, um, or whether that was something that came out of you, um, your passion was something that also helped other people, you know, and helped the planet, which I think is so, so much more uh, meaningful. So um, yeah, man, no, big, re big respect for you for, for what you did through, through those times, because um, as I say, you were like a very big inspiration for me in terms of like seeing someone in my own dressing room being able to, to manage both. Um, how, how did, did this, Two industries, let's call it um, business and football. How did the two of them um, kind of feed off each other? Did you feel that you learned things in one industry that then you kind of took into the other? Or yeah, I mean, big time. I mean, big time because uh, I mean, football. I mean, and I would say like uh, being a, a top athlete and uh, playing at the top level. I mean, is obviously like uh, a massive pressure. So, um, I mean, what you learn in sport is like first performing under pressure. So I think that's uh, very important to be able to deal with that pressure. And in a business side, obviously, when you're an entrepreneur, when you create a new company, you have to deal with the pressure also, because obviously like you have, like in sport, you have up and down and you have to face like all this disruption and you have to face all these, uh, this difficult time and, and find solution in order to move forward. So like one is performing under pressure, the second aspect I would say is also like dedication. Dedication is very important. I mean, I personally like, uh, it's not like I was born with like, uh, the more, I was not the most gifted, you know, like kid. And uh, I mean, uh, obviously you need to have some kind of gift, but after I think like hard work took me where, 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 where I've been and where I am today. So I believe in dedication and the dedication I was putting in sport is something I've also been able to use, you know, in a business side, you know, like being able to not take no for an answer. I mean, that's, uh, that's me. So um, that was also very helpful. And also I would say like the, the leadership and, and team spirit, you see like leadership, like being able to, to take the lead, being able to inspire others, being able, you know, in a difficult situation to look at the positive and, and keep moving forward. That's something very important. And when you, you, you build a business, when you have a team, you need to be able to inspire the people around you first. And also you need to be able to teach these people team spirit, you know, working as a unique, work, as a unit, working as a team and making sure that everyone goes in the same direction. That's very important. And that's something you find extremely important in sport, but that's something you find extremely important also in business. So yes, definitely. I mean, once I've been helping the others, I would say they are very much, uh, very much aligned on these aspects. Yeah. I feel like that, that is an advantage. Like football gives you much more than just, the sport, you know, um, there's so many situations that we go through, even at a very young age, you know, you probably have to leave your home and you have to be independent very early. Uh, you are subject to a lot of pressures inside the game and outside the game. So obviously I feel that that gives you that advantage that then after when you get into business, you have already gone through this experience. So they therefore could help. And I can, and I, and I can see that uh, at the time that we were at Arsenal, um, Arsene Wenger was the, was the coach. Um, did Arsene um, ever give you any sort of advice? Was he, was he someone that was helpful um, with you uh, having this second career on the side? How was um, your relationship with him and, and everything going on around you? I would say that, uh, I mean, Arsene played a little bit like, like many of us, I would say like a, a feather figure. You know, it was yeah. like, uh, we all, we all moved to Arsenal very young. I mean, I arrived there, I was 18 and a half, 19. 
Then I played there, I left for five years for Milan and uh, he also took me back. I also came back to Arsenal. So obviously Arsenal played a massive role in my career. Someone who I've always been very close. And um, I mean, he was kind of like a professor, I would say. <laughs> yes. So uh, someone always like very, very calm. That's something um, I've always admired because I'm someone with like a lot of energy, hyperactive, and I'm also like... Uh, all over the place on the pitch. So, I mean, I've always been very impressed of how calm and his serenity, uh, he always has been like extremely like, you know, like even you remember halftime, you lose a game or like, like everything goes so quickly, but I had the halftime when we're going back, he was the one bringing the serenity in the dressing room. He was the one like, okay, let's calm down. Let's relax. Let's try to analyze the situation and be like, and, and, and find what's not going well and address it. So that the type of things which uh, um, I've, I've been able to learn from him because obviously like uh, I'm, I'm a passionate person. I'm someone who's going to have the tendency to react quickly and maybe like take the wrong decision because I will react without yeah. thinking sometimes. So he's the type of person which, you know, like I've put things into consideration and where, you know, it's like, well, wait a minute before to react, before to say something. Let's think about it. Let's see what's, what, how to address this situation. So someone like very calm, a lot of serenity. And yeah, like, um, you know, like a kind of a professor for all of us. I like as a figure, I'm sure it was also the same for you. Yeah, for sure. I feel like he was someone that um, more than inspiring you um, with the conversations you could have, he was someone that would inspire you by the way he behaved, right? And I feel like in the last few years of his career, he used to get a lot of criticism because, well, the results weren't going the way um that we wished that they went uh but he was always standing uh in the side of the players you know uh whatever noise was going on outside he was always as you say bringing serenity to the dressing room and giving us the confidence and and the belief that we needed and you know in 2017 we we he won another FA Cup you know his last trophy at Arsenal after many years of 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 being criticized so i think that's a clear example of like leadership and vision and believing and also someone that really loved his job, you know, that you could see that going every morning to training, that was his life, you yes, know. Sure. And obviously he trained until like very, you know, until, until he was like, I don't know, almost like 70, right? And, um, you know, he was, he was giving 100% every day. He was at the training ground at seven o'clock in the morning and that was his life. And for me, that was like something really beautiful to see and something that really inspired, you know, that you could see that, you know, he, he didn't want to stop coaching because that, that had always been his life. So um, definitely so many lessons that we could take from him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he loved the football more than anything. And, uh, and he was a passionate person. I think that's, yeah. I mean, that's something which, is, uh, which we all have to, to learn from these people. I think when, you, when you're passionate about something, you do the extra, which makes, makes you do it, you know, like a special way. So I think, I mean, if I had one of the best to 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 the people, I mean, watching us right now, it's just like, you should do what, you, what you're passionate about. And, and because, you know, it's like, when you will have to face some difficulties, your passion will take you, will take you through, you know, and like, will, will help you to basically like, keep going. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's true. I fully agree with you. Yeah. And well, another thing that uh, this is, I don't know if this, is, if this is something that you started when you were playing, but uh, as you said earlier, um, you turn into veganism as well. You went vegan. Um, why did you make um, this decision and how did that come about? Is that related to sustainability? Is that maybe something that you started because of health? Um, why did you make this decision? Wow, okay. So I'm going to have quite a few things to say about that. So <laughs> if you give me a few minutes, I'll, I'll tell you. So I would say a few different factors. I mean, the first one uh, is sustainability. I think uh, sustainability is the first one, sustainability. But you will see that sustainability is also related with health. So from my aspect, um, I mean, also because playing at the top level and the performance for us is extremely important. I mean, like, we have no choice except perform every single day. And uh, when you play games every three days, I mean, like, what's, as I was saying before, the, the recovery is as important as the training and as a game. So what I've learned is like when you play a lot of games, when you train very hard, you generate like a lot of acidity, okay? And this acidity increases the risk of injuries. This acidity is, makes you tired. 
And what I've learned is um, in order to get rid of this acidity, what you need to know, you need to alkaline. Mm -hmm. And to alkaline, you need to avoid any type of animal protein. Why? Because animal protein, for you to digest this piece of meat, for you to digest, you know, like a piece of fish, you need to basically break it down. And in order to break it down in your, I mean, like a stomach, you need yeah. to generate a lot of acidity. And this acidity, basically, instead of getting rid of the acidity after like an exercise or after a game, you generate even more acidity. And for me, I mean, like the best example was like at the time I was used to eat a lot of meat because, you know, I was still like in this state of mind and yeah. eating a lot of meat, I'm going to build more muscle and all that is also outdated. I mean, like, um, you know, it's like that's something we used to believe like 10 years ago. Now people have grown, people have under understand better than, I'm sorry to say that, but that's, that's bullshit. But... Um, <laughs> So because I was getting, I was after doing a lot of games, I used to get injured, muscle problem. What I did, I completely stopped animal protein, getting away all this acidity coming from the animal protein. And after that, I felt so much better. I stopped being injured. So that's one of the reasons also in order to be able to perform every three days, in order to, to perform in every training, I got rid of this animal protein in order to get away like all this acidity from my body. That's the first aspect. And the second aspect, as I mentioned, obviously, is like is all the environment, uh, environmental aspect because obviously, like processed food, the way we are producing like uh, uh, meat, the way we are producing fish, is becoming a disaster, and all that is having like basically an impact on the environment. I mean, I mean, if I mention also that I think close to seventy percent of the antibiotics produced are being used for to feed the animals, mm -hmm. and uh, I think there is something very logical which is like when we sick we all take antibiotics because we want to cure the, 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 the virus i would say but if you eat too much animal protein at the same time you absorb all these antibiotics which have been given to the animals so what we do is like we developed all these anticore who makes you that the day you want to take an antibiotics to cure maybe a virus one day will not work anymore so for all these reasons i decided to become a vegan and um, feeling great. I'm sure, I mean, like you're playing also at top level. I'm sure you're building muscle. I'm sure you, 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 you're like feeling amazing. So that's my personal story. And, uh, and so it was very much like health related, but also environmental related. I think, I think the antibiotics thing was one of the things that surprised me the most because I had been vegan for like two years when I saw that in the news. And, um, you know, I saw this, this little documentary about how antibiotics were not affecting people anymore and they didn't know why and they just realized that obviously um the meat and poultry that we eat they're fed with so many antibiotics that by the time that we take them we have antibodies in our body and they're not working anymore which i think to me is crazy and i think my, my story is like very similar like for me when i started it was purely health i heard so many people like david hay the boxer and um truck runners that they were telling me like yo it's possible to do this so i started and you know, that developed like some sort of consciousness that it, it wasn't selfish anymore. It wasn't for my health anymore. It was more, uh, you know, for animal welfare. It was for sustainability. It was for all these other things, you know. And um, so it's, it's so interesting to see how one door opens so many others, you know. You start being a vegan because for one reason, but then you start realizing that there's so many other benefits behind it. And um, as you say, um, you know, reducing the risk of injury, reducing inflammation. Um, I also have to say that as bad as eating meat is being, in, um, you know, processed foods every day. Because now we have like loads of like meat substitutes, you know, we have like loads of like uh, burgers that taste like meat and all this stuff. And at the end of the day, um, the benefit that you get in from not having meat in your diet, you're literally replacing it by just having um, a product that is not natural at all, you know, and you put in all these chemicals and all this sugar and all these saturated fats in your body that, as you say, they produce the same acidity that as if you're eating um, animal protein. So I think it's important also to say that um, obviously every now and then everyone can have like a burger or something, but, um, you know, to have a, a plant-based, I would say, um, diet full of uh, like nuts and grains and, and, and beans and stuff, that's what really gives your body this alkalinization that you're talking about and gets rid of the acidity. I think that's important for everyone to know that as well. Yeah, I fully agree with you. And, and again, you know, for people listening, I mean, 
we're not saying, I mean, like uh, maybe switch off from one day to another, no more meat, no more fish or no, but I think what's very important is to have a solid base. And yeah. obviously like sometimes it happens, yes, on a weekend, I can make an exception. I mean, I don't have any dairy, you know, but maybe yes, on a weekend, sometimes I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a pizza. I mean, like what I'm trying to say is like here, what's important is to realize that the excess of this is not good for, for, for your health. And just to give a, 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 funny, a funny story, I mean, so I stopped the meat, animal, uh, animal protein. I mean, I stopped all the, the meat and I was only eating fish. And yeah. at the time I was still playing at Arsenal and uh, I told Gary, you know, like uh, doctor, our doctor, I said, listen doc, can you please check my mercury, please? Because uh, I was watching one of these documentary and um, they were mentioning the fact that in the sea, the mercury, and again, you know, that's another sign of pollution, you see, yeah. another impact of, of, of the human on, on the sea. So in the sea, you have a lot of mercury and they were saying that having too much fish was having a bad impact on the health because you accumulate the mercury and if you, level of mercury is too high, then you intoxicate yourself. So we, as we used to do like a couple of, uh, you know, every three, four months, like blood tests, I told the dog, dog, can you please check my mercury? Dog said, no, but you know, um, I mean, it's not something we do, but okay, let's do it. It will take a bit more time and uh, I come back to you. And then like a month after, or a few weeks after, I see the dog coming back to me and say, Mathieu, are you okay? Can I speak to you? <laughs> Doc, <laughs> what's happening here? You're scaring me. And, um, and the doctor told me, listen, I mean, your mercury is 10 times higher than normal level. You are stopped of like intoxicating yourself. And since that day, I stopped eating, I stopped eating, uh, eating, eating fish. And that's why that's also, so basically it was a small process where I stopped yeah. meat, stopped fish. And then, you know, it's like, uh, because the more you educate yourself, the more you learn about what's really happening, then, you know, the more you become careful and, uh, you know, like you choose exactly what you want. So that was a small story. I'm sure you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's so like, funny because um, I, I had a, like a very similar story as well. And shout out to Gary because he's, uh, he's the loveliest man and he's a great doctor. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be hearing this. <laughs> and, we, love um, him. we love him. Come on. <laughs> we do. And me, um, I had a straight away when I switched to meat, uh, sorry, when I switched to, to veganism, um, everyone was really worried about my blood test as well. And like three, after three years, um, I did a blood test like not long ago. And, um, and Gary uh, gave it back to me and he was like, Hector, your numbers are perfect. You know, like everything's fine. But he said like, you probably need to stop um, um, supplementing omega-3. And I was like, dog, I've never supplemented in my life. <laughs> and he was like, really? <laughs> and he was like, how, how, how do you do this with a vegan diet? Like, you don't have any fish, you don't have anything. And I was like, no. And he was checking the numbers. He's like, I can't believe this. And I was like, dog, listen, you can't be vegan and literally tick all the boxes. Don't worry, you're fine. <laughs> so yeah, man, little stories with, um, with yeah. good old Gary, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like um, what, um, what other um, choices have you made in your life to kind of uh, conscious choices to help sustainability or, um, you know, apart from your diet, um, for example, I've been driving an electric car for a long time. Uh, I don't use plastics at home. Recycling, which is really easy, is something that I've been doing for a while. And I'm, and I'm trying to always um, go that step further, you know. So what is it that, that, that you do in your life or do you have any recommendations in like day-to-day -day living? I mean... I think what's important to tell people is like small changes can have a massive impact when you put them together because, um, you know, it's like if we present like this, this massive, uh, you know, sustainable aspect and environment, environmental issues, you know, like if you put that on big scale, people will have the tendency to say, oh my God, I mean, but what can I do here? Yeah. But that's wrong. You know, it's like the reality is like if all of us have a, a small changes in our everyday life, putting that together, you know, we can have a massive impact. So what I did, like you mentioned, yeah, change my, <clears throat> my, 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 I mean, the way I was eating, you know, like I became much more like I turned I turn as a vegan. I mean, plastic. So for example, I carry my, I carry my, my, my own bottle, which is like a, um, a glass bottle or if not like, a, so basically like I'm, I'm trying to use as less as possible uh, plastic. I take the train when I can, uh, and uh, so that's something obviously like it's not always possible, but I'm taking the train when I can. Uh, I walk a lot, I use a bike, you know, in London, I'm not, uh, I'm not 
using car i live in a center so i'm not using car most of the time i like to to walk through the park you know i just take a i take a bicycle you know so i think now it's it's pretty it's pretty efficient because uh, they are everywhere available uh what else i'm doing yes home also recycling the different stuff you know trying to separate plastic to others or when you use plastic because i think it's important recycling is becoming like a extremely extremely important in our everyday and if we don't want the plastic to end up in the sea i think that's a that's very important, but also uh, talking about it, you know, like like we're doing today, being able to to communicate around that, being able to use our platform to try to create awareness, to educate people, and and to tell them, I mean, like what are the small things to do uh, for them to to have an impact. I think it's also from our side, like a, a positive things to do. Um, I would love to to also join forces with other athletes, potentially to to do something with a bigger impact. So, you know what? I mean, like, uh, I would love to do something with you. Maybe we can join forces. And sure, like, man. <laughs> Stay in the call. Stay in the call after. <laughs> yes, like, exactly. I love to, I mean, like, um, when we can, when we can, uh, when we can travel and uh, maybe September, we should definitely uh, get together. And because sure. I think it's, it's beautiful to share the same passion and uh, we have the same goal, which is like to, to drive change. And I think that's, that's beautiful. And again, you know, by joining forces, I think we can, we can really have like a much bigger impact. So all these things, um, you know, I'm trying to do all these things to kind of like give a meaning to my life. I mean, like we have been extremely lucky we became uh, we're living from our pa from our passion i mean since a very early age i wanted to be a football player i mean we are extremely lucky because we man managed to achieve this dream so so now you know it's like i think what's important and and for me and i'm sure for you to giving back is also like being able to have this positive impact and also drive change and kind of like do good for people around so that's my way of like of giving back which is like trying to to give a small contribution to an important problem which is impacting all of us that was amazing, man. And um, just to finish, as uh, we've talked before, um, you're someone that likes to educate yourself. And just to give that little bit uh, of uh, knowledge or education to our listeners, can you recommend us any books, uh, any shows, any documentaries that you feel, um, you know, go in sync with everything that we talk about? So, yes, um, I've been reading two books i mean like one is uh, the story of the founder of nike mm -hmm. big shoe i think yeah, yeah. is that shoe dog shoe dog shoe dog shoe dog, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoe dog. Shoe dog that one is it's it's really good and there is another book which is called sapiens yeah I've, is. So, I've read that it's really good yeah which is so really good so yes that's what i've been uh, also i've been trying to read more during the during the, the lockdown to be very honest i mean like i'm doing an audiobook so oh which one which one are you listening to just these two i was listening to this two. Oh, these two. Oh, yeah. cool. i've been i've been listening to uh, to blink now have you heard about blink from malcolm gladwell what is it about it, it's really interesting because it's about the um, about the power of uh, intuition you know from like in sports or like in the way we judge people how we have a part of our brain that makes decisions before that we, we even realize that we're making them. And um, actually, I think it's really interesting because I think you can agree that when you play football at your best is when you're not thinking. It's when everything is kind of like coming natural, you know? Mm -hmm. And obviously, to be able to fine-tune this part of our brain, you have to practice, you have to rehearse, you have to train. But um, to be able to listen to our gut feeling um, in every single situation of life from like judging a person's appearance to then performing in your own job. Um, yeah. Uh, it is a really good listen. It's called blink. I'm, I'm listening to it, uh, as an audio book as well and uh, really enjoying it. So maybe, maybe. Uh, you can... And that's next, definitely next one. I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's funny you, you mentioned that, but I mean, also what people don't realize is the power of the mind. I mean, like in, in sport, I mean, I don't think you will, uh, you will, you will disagree to say that maybe what, like 60, 70 percent in sport is the mind. I mean, the power of the mind is like it's it's so important. And more and more, you know, I think like athletes have realized, and uh, the stronger you are mentally, I mean, the, the better you perform, and uh, and the better you deal with pressure, and the better you deal with uh, all the, these up and down. So uh, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. I'll definitely, uh, I will definitely do the audiobook too. Cool, man. So, Matthew, listen, yeah. thank you so much for your time. I have to say, I've really sure. enjoyed this. A lot of information, uh, yeah. a lot of knowledge from you. I'm sure people 
uh, we'll learn a lot from this conversation. And yeah. mate, best of luck for what the future holds for you. And mate, obviously, as I, as I said, really happy to be able to join forces and hopefully get this message across and do bigger things that we're already doing. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, everyone that's listening to will help us with it as well. For sure. No, listen, thanks a lot for inviting me. I mean, real pleasure. And I was so happy to, to be part of it. Congratulations for all the work you're doing also. Thank Let's you. definitely catch up in September. Uh, we'll meet and hopefully we come out with something which is like, uh, which will, uh, will do a lot of good for people around. And you have a big game on a weekend. So um, rest, work hard and uh, make Okay. Thank you, man. I appreciate okay. you, bro. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. 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 To keep up to date on future episodes, subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts at Hector Bellerin.